So A Legacy of Hawaiian Song and String is really a, a compilation of, of so many events in my life that I've gotten to recognize and taking this album and being truly intentional. You know, after 20 years of being in the music industry, going back to school in 2017 and figuring out, okay, I was a performer, but now having a role in the community with Queen Lili'u Kalani Trust, you know, working with children, sharing my love for my culture, but also shifting, shifting where we need to. And this album is so meaningful because I never knew this history. And that's like the big question, how come, <laughs> you know? The fact that Himele Lahui Hawaii was our first national anthem, I had no idea. Or, you know, the influence that our kupuna had on American music, genres such as country and bluegrass and jazz. And it really pays homage to that specific time, turn of the 19th century. And of course, 1872, when Kamehameha V goes and searches for Henry Berger to teach these young Hawaiian men at the Keoneula Reform School, teach them everything. Those Hawaiian kids were learning multiple instruments, right? Brass instruments, string instruments. They were learning to compose. Some were orphans, juveniles. They had the opportunity to really become musical pioneers and ambassadors that represented the Hawaiian kingdom at its best. We need to retell these stories and pay homage to those who really truly influence this wave of innovation and excellence. And it all happened, you know, turn of the 19th century. But because I love Hawaiian music so much, it's, you know, it's fun. A Legacy of Hawaiian Song and String was decided because we have this relationship with our past, but also preserving those traditions through music, through mo'olelo. And, you know, using these primary sources that Kealakai Center for Pacific Strings has uh, brought into this project, it's for the, the future, it's for the kamali'i, it's for the next generation to keep that pilina, keeping that continuum going. You know, this album, A Legacy of Hawaiian Song and String, is a little bit unique in that it's a really deep tribute in honor of a Royal Hawaiian musical arts tradition. But we've actually uh, turned to some of our friends in Nashville who are descendants of this same musical tradition. A steel guitar player named Rob Ikes who plays Dobro. He plays in the original tuning of Joseph Kekuku. The tuning Kekuku came up with in 1886. Nashville Dobro players in bluegrass music and country still play that tuning today. They all learn from these Hawaiian musicians of Mekia and Joseph Kikuku's generation. So this is a chance for them to pay tribute and honor their Hawaiian roots. Uh, we also turn to some really wonderful fiddle players. These guys play on the Grand Old Opry and in the sessions in Nashville. This album attempts, in my mind, to draw a link between the early, early Hawaiian fiddle tradition. Uh, Joseph Kekuku learned his first vocabulary on the steel guitar from his cousin Samuel K. Nainoa who was a fiddle player in the Kamehameha School Glee Club and also a member of the Kawaihau Glee Club. You know, it's interesting to me how there's these dialogues that really transcend centuries between the instruments. Uh, it's almost like these instruments, the fiddles, the guitars, the dobros, the mandolins, the ukuleles, they have a life all their own. And they outlast us all most of the time. Uh, the fact that we can sit down today with Prince Kuhio's guitar made by Manuel Nunez or the Royal Hawaiian Band Martin guitar, uh, custom made for the Royal Hawaiian Band in 1934. It's a, it's a real honor to care for these instruments and 
connect with their voice that transcends time and space. The legacy of Hawaiian song and string really uh, spans to, you know, recognizing the people, the place, the music, and of course that continuum, right? Bridging the, the generations of the past, the present, and moving uh, towards the future. We all are a part of that cordage, right? That kaula, that umbilical cord, right? I think we're stepping into, you know, a chapter where we can present all of these legacies in such a profound way. Oh, no.